Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Integrated Wealth Systems Weekly Market Awareness and Market Update from Laurel Langmire. Very happy to have a number of guests on the call today. Uh, not only have some of our top finishers for our virtual meetup and marketplace in August, but have a very special guest, Joe Campbell, who is going to be speaking today on uh, some of the topics that we presented on during the event. So before we get going here, as we do with every call, I want to make sure everyone knows how this will work. We will have uh, live feedback available. So if you want to type us a question in the Q&A box or the chat line. Go ahead and do that now. Let us know where you're coming from. And, and Laura, what's the question you want to ask folks as we get started today? Let's see. How many of you have a self-directed IRA? So put in your name, where are you from? How many of you have a self-directed IRA? Welcome on Facebook Live. We are, again, broadcasting on all channels. Thomas, I think you're uh, going to a few of the other social channels today. And uh, as with every Tuesday and Thursday at our live broadcast, we're bringing to say that financial infrastructure, you know, we've got to continue to work on it. And so many of you, even though you've heard about self-directed IRAs, you don't have it in place. I was coaching somebody this morning, and I think a lot of it, so Joe, you know, I might kind of lead you on some of these topics I hear about the excuses, which is I don't have enough money to fund it, so why open it? And so I said, I don't care if they're open, put $50 in. So once you're set and you start making money, you have a place for the new money to go. Because what happens behaviorally to most people especially with new business owners, you make a spend it, make a spend it, make a spend it. There's not a place to put it away. So between iFlip, so Thomas, if you want to put up again, the free flip uh, software, and then what's going to happen is you're going to download the app. It's free. As you get a certain amount of money under management where you're in the 10, 15, 20,000 that you're doing in iFlip, you do move to a desktop and it gets a little more sophisticated with software and your options for more returns, quite frankly. I always say flip is one place clearly keep your money as far as a place to set. And Joe, you are the next place. So whether that's a Roth or solo, I'm just going to let you kind of go and explain the differences. And I know you've been on other broadcasts, but it's a little bit of a different group. We are uh, live to Facebook. If any of you, I know Aaron, uh, Deb, uh, Joe, yourself, if you want to go live as well to your Facebook and share, that'd be great. And uh, let's talk about the kind of qualified plans you can open. And then I'm going to talk continually more behaviorally about what to do and when, especially new business owners. Um, and literally, I don't care if it's $50. And a lot of times, even kids accounts, like, you know, a lot of people with four or five kids, they can't fully fund all of them. I mean, some of that would be upward of a hundred grand. Some people can just start. And I think that's the big message is a lot of you are waiting for some magical moment that probably is not going to happen because you keep spending your money. So Joe, Joe's from uh, Horizon Trust, by the way. He's with us. He'll be in Boise. We're all heading up there tomorrow and uh, going to have a huge real estate tour followed by a big table on Monday, Tuesday. But Joe, talk to this group about the accounts and why they need them. So we'll start with the IRAs, Laurel. It sounds like we may be talking about employer type plans in just a bit. So let's just go over the differences with the IRAs first and foremost. So uh, as far as, you know, the, the dragging your feet mentality or the I don't quite have enough to start saving for retirement, if, if that's the answer you're giving yourself every time you have an extra $20 in your wallet or purse, then that's exactly what's going to happen. You're never going to have enough cash flow to start saving for your retirement, whether it be a 401k with your employer or if you're self-employed, setting up an IRA for yourself. The great thing about an IRA is it's your own individual retirement account. There's nobody telling you what you can and can't do with it to an extent. We'll get into IRS rules and regulations later, but the first thing that you can at least start doing before you put that money to work is start saving it. Savings accounts that are attached to the same bank as your checking account usually don't work out in your favor. You have access to the checking account, you have access to that savings account as well. So that's really where the IRA can be a huge differentiator for some of those who may make a real good faith attempt to start saving some of that cash flow so they can start putting it towards retirement or towards investments to kind of help supplement some income. The problem is, is do you tap into it? So that's really where having an IRA that's completely removed and its intention, its sole purpose is to save for your retirement. 
Uh, so really start, just like Laurel says, start. Whether it's $20 a paycheck, $50 a month, whatever the case may be, any little bit helps. You know, we'll, we, I'm sure we've, we've talked about compounding interest on numerous occasions through uh, some of these podcasts and events that we've done in the past. And the same is going to ring true now with an IRA. Uh, you need to save into an IRA and start utilizing that capital into some of these investments, especially some of you who are a part of the community. Uh, having these investment vehicles are a great way for you to inject some additional capital into some of these projects that are constantly going on. Now, the difference is between a traditional and a Roth IRA and just IRAs in general. So a lot of you may have an IRA or maybe an old 401k from a former employer that was maybe moved to a rollover IRA, as it's coined, when you leave a place of employment. So some of you very well may have an old 401k that's technically been converted to an IRA. Now, the difference between an IRA that's most of you are familiarized with, which is the ones that are tied to Wall Street, your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, your, your Fidelities, your T. Rowe Prices of the world, your Charles Schwab's, I'm really the exact opposite of that. So when you're dealing with retirement accounts, IRAs, there's the stock market, and then there's everything else that uh, your larger broker dealers like that will not hold. They just won't hold some of these alternative assets that you guys have started to get exposure to, uh, whether it's real estate or private business startups, private stock, uh, venture capital, LLCs, oil and gas, precious metals. I mean, the list goes on and on and on as far as what it is that you can. And um, just a lot of you just don't understand how to get started. And that's really why I'm here. So those of you, again, um, the, some of the best things while Joe's coming back that I think you all need to be doing is you need to be not only opening, like I said, the flip, which is a cash account. So that's you and flip. So I kind of speak to Deb and Aaron. They're out there, the two of our winners, of our three winners. So when you open a flip, that's just you and cash, right? Your personal account, your kid's account. Different was when you work on a, whether it's a solo or a Roth, that is another flip account. You know, I have a solo with uh, with Flip. I have a Roth with Flip, a personal with Flip. So I don't know that some people realize like how it works. So I just want to keep explaining the what I'm calling the infrastructure. And then your qualified money is different. Your solos with your company, your Roth is you, but it's tax free and your cash. But it's not one flip and three, you know, ways the money gets in. So maybe you can explain a little more of that application as well, Joe. Sure. So, so as far as setting up the accounts, really, when you set up a self-directed IRA, there's a couple ways to inject capital into those accounts. And that's either going to be through the form of contributions or through the form of a rollover or a transfer from a prior existing IRA. So those are the three ways that you can move money into a self-directed IRA. And at that point, that's really when you have the capital inside of the qualified vehicle, which is the IRA that allows you to start investing in some of these alternatives. Now, depending on your age, uh, the contribution limits do change. So you have contribution limits that's starting right now. It goes up every couple of years just due to cost of living. But right now, $6,000 is the amount that anybody can make a contribution into the account. So that's the maximum. The IRS does have a maximum dollar amount that you can invest into or contribute into an IRA on a yearly basis. But there's no minimums. So that's really where start with something. Just get started. Uh, as far as the traditional IRA versus the Roth IRA, that's really the biggest differentiator is the taxation on those accounts. So uh, we'll get into, uh, like Laurel mentioned, some of the iFlip applications and some of the other investment vehicles that are available to you. But let's uh, first understand which account makes most sense for you. So as far as the IRAs are concerned, the traditional IRA is an account that has mm -hmm. not been taxed ever. So as you start making contributions into this account, the money that you're making these contributions into haven't been taxed on that front end. Mm -hmm. So what that means is just to kind of give you a scenario is let's just say you made contributions of the five, let's just call it $5,000 a year for five years, and you've turned that into $25,000 now that's inside of a traditional IRA. I or you do some of the real estate projects that are part of the community or whatever the case may be, and you're generating a rate of return, and, and you've done this now, let's call it another five years that you've made these investment vehicles, and you've turned that $25,000 that you initially put into a traditional IRA. You've now turned it into, let's just call it $75,000. 
um, just on your initial contribution of 25000 but the fact that you've been making the contributions and doing some investments for the past 10 years now, you've been able to create an IRA that has a value of 75000 Now, when you hit retirement age, which the IRS deems as 59 and a half, there's some caveats to this rule, obviously, right now with the CARES Act that's been created due to uh, the COVID pandemic that we are a part of. But generally speaking, when you hit 59 and a half, that's when the IRS now says you are eligible to start taking distributions from the account without an early distribution penalty. So you can always remove money out of the IRA. There's an early distribution penalty if you do so prior to 59 and a half, but you still can. Now, 59 and a half is when the IRS says, OK, you've hit retirement age. We're going to go ahead and start letting you take money out of this IRA at your leisure or when you see useful without taking that distribution penalty. Now, in a traditional IRA, you have all of this time to start taking those distributions up to age 70 and a half. That's where if you have not taken a distribution in a traditional IRA, the IRS is now going to tell you, hey, look, you've waited long enough. We haven't got any taxes out of this account. Pay Uncle Sam. So at 70 and a half, if you haven't taken any distributions from a traditional IRA, the IRS is now going to require that you start taking at least at a minimum a distribution out of the account, which is based on a couple of factors. Now, your primary factors are going to be your age post 70 and a half and the value of the account will ultimately decide what that minimum dollar amount is that you need to deduct from this traditional IRA on a yearly basis. And once you hit 70 and a half, you can no longer make contributions to a traditional IRA either. So you have up until 70 and a half to put as much money as you can. This is where what Laurel says, start with something and put what you can when you can. Because depending on which IRA that you decide to go with, you may come to a point where you can no longer put anything into it and you're kind of stuck with what you got. Yeah. So that's kind of where do it where you can. Don't adjust your standard of living because you get a raise. Adjust how much you put into your retirement so you can enjoy that money later. Um, so that's where the traditional IRA has a few differences versus the Roth. Now let's contrast. Let's go ahead and take the Roth IRA and mention some of the differences here. So let's take the same scenario. We've done five years of making $5,000 contributions into a Roth IRA. And we've done the same investment vehicles that we've done, whether it's real estate, iFlip, some of these other vehicles that are available to you throughout the community, whatever it is, whatever that portfolio ultimately ends up looking like, you've generated in the last 10 years with that initial five years worth of contributions and the investment vehicles that you chose generated a rate of return for you where you have now built a portfolio in this Roth IRA that is equivalent to $75,000 as well. Now, versus the traditional, this is where the Roth IRA really starts to kind of naturally have its perks. So on that 25000 that you initially put into the Roth IRA, you know what tax bracket you are a part of now. So you know exactly how much you pay on taxes for any earned income that comes into your household. Well, on the Roth IRA, you're going to pay taxes on that initial $25,000 that you've made in the form of contributions for the first five years. So you've met the tax requirement or that criteria that the IRS says, okay, this IRA has paid its taxes to Uncle Sam. Now, what it's generated over the course of the last 10 years, same dollar amount as a traditional, still generated at $75,000. But now let's take that 59 and a half rule that go ahead and fast forward. We've now hit retirement age and you're ready to start taking distributions. The same rule applies, whether you're taking a distribution from a traditional or a Roth IRA. The same rule, if you decide to take a distribution prior to 59 and a half, you will be taxed on the early distribution penalty, that 10% that I mentioned earlier. That doesn't go away in a traditional versus a Roth. That's simply a timetable that the IRS has in place. Now, again, remember, some of these timetables have also changed just due to the CARES Act and a couple of things that have occurred this year. But generally speaking, um, the 10-year early distribution penalty applies to either Roth or traditional. But let's say you've hit the 59 and a half rule. You want to start taking those distributions. 
you can take a distribution at this point with no early distribution penalty from either the traditional or the Roth. But with the Roth, that $75,000 that it is being, that's created, that its value is at now after this 10 years worth of you investing. Now you start taking those distributions. You don't pay taxes on any of that $75,000. You paid taxes on the $25,000 that you initially put into the account. Where with the traditional, you never paid taxes on the front end during those contributions. So the IRS hasn't been paid, if you will. Uh, you haven't taken care of your tax requirements for that IRA vehicle. So the IRS is now going to charge you, based on the tax bracket that you're currently in, for every single distribution that you take thereafter until that account is completely depleted. So with the Roth IRA, you're paying taxes on 25000 of the 75000 that's been created. With a traditional IRA, you're paying taxes on the entire $75,000 that's been created in that IRA over the course of the last 10 years. So forward thinking, pay the taxes on the tax bracket you know you're in now. What tax bracket are you going to be in 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Whatever that timetable looks like for you, just looking at inflation, our government, the way things have been going lately, I don't even want to know what taxation is going to look like in 15 years, let alone 20 or 30. So just keep that in mind when you decide to set up your IRA vehicle, which one is going to make the most sense. Now, the other cool thing about a Roth IRA as well is there's no 70 and a half requirement. So if you want to continue to inject capital into your Roth IRA, maybe one of your, you're just one of those workaholics. It's 70, you're 72, you're still grinding. You can still put money into this Roth IRA. The traditional, you're done. 70 and a half is the cutoff. You can no longer add money if you have earned income. You can only take it out. So there is a cap as far as how much money you can put into a traditional IRA in regards to your age timeline than there is with a Roth IRA where those timelines don't necessarily ring true. There are some qualifiers naturally with the Roth IRA. It does need to be held for at least five years before you start taking distributions in order to qualify for completely tax-free removal of those funds through the form of a distribution. But as long as you hit those thresholds that the IRS has in place, it is a tax-free vehicle. You've only paid taxes on the initial money that you put in through the form of contributions. And that's the biggest difference between the Roth IRA versus the traditional IRA is the amount of so, taxes. So, so, so Jay, I'm going to go higher level. Like, I mean, sure. to meet with you to know which one, but in general, right? I mean, how would you say people start? I mean, I just, I'm a huge fan of the Roth because right now you can do any of this huge tax-free growth inside the Roth, whether it's flip, your cryptocurrency, your digital currencies, property, things like that. So clearly I think everyone, including every kid should have a Roth. And if you don't know how to knock your income down to qualify, that's why you get coached by us. But as far as like uh, somebody who's like, they're unemployed, a whole bunch of unemployed. I was talking to a few other folks coaching them this morning who want to get into real estate. And I said, well, you either get to bring the deal, which if you don't have any experience, you probably aren't going to bring a great deal. But what you can bring is money. And there's tons of 401k money. Like Aaron, when I look at you, right? I don't know your background enough, Debra, but like the amount of unemployed people that we know that have these 401ks that could meet Joe, self-direct to them. Talk about the kinds of things I mean, right now, sitting in their past employer, why would you leave it behind, right? We call them little 401k orphans. They get left behind and nobody thinks they can do anything with them. But once they self-direct from that past employer, what are some of the things, just get them excited about what they can invest in that they normally would never have opportunity to do? So you, you bring up a great point. That's unfortunately, that's one of the things that this uh, COVID pandemic has definitely brought to our table is a huge amount of individuals that are now no longer employed. Uh, what that means is that 401k money, there's usually a lot of triggering events that need to occur before an employer will allow you to use that capital in a qualified vehicle of your choosing, in an investment vehicle of your choosing as well. And the major triggering event right now is going to be being laid off, being fired, leaving that company. Those are those types of triggering events that now allow you or give you access to that 401k that was a part of your employer's plan since you've started. Um, so maybe over the course of the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, however long you've been employed and contributing to that 401k, if you have left that place of employment, whether it be through the form of a firing, leaving, a layoff, 
uh, you are no longer employed, those monies can be moved out of a qualified 401k account and put into a qualified self-directed IRA vehicle of your choosing, whether that be a traditional or a Roth or even a solo K for some of you self-employed individuals out there as well. Uh, all of them will allow for 401k, 403b type qualified monies that are from a former employer plan. At this point, if that triggering event happened with you, can be moved into a self-directed IRA. Uh, and the process is pretty simple. Uh, so realistically, what would happen is we, we, we send you an application. We create the account for you. We can literally have an account number for you within within 72 hours. We have an account or a home, if you will, for those funds to be moved into. So you're not creating a taxable event through the form of a distribution uh, right. by moving those monies out the wrong way. If you're looking, you know, I'm going to take my money out of this distribution since I no longer work there. I'm just going to take my 401k and go buy a piece of real estate. No, move it into another qualified plan, buy that real estate and have your retirement plan working in an asset vehicle that you're familiar with and furthering the amount of money that you have for retirement. So don't use that money as a quick payday. Go rehab your own personal property. I and mean, that's all great, but don't take a retirement vehicle completely depleted so that you can have a new patio or, you know, a new couch. <laughs> but in, keep it in a retirement vehicle. It's already there. You didn't have it before. Put it to work. Put it to work in some of these investment vehicles. And and the sky's the limit, Laura. I don't know how creative you want me to get on this in regards We're to- I'm just going to give a good overview of uh, what people can do. I, it, when you really get serious, here's what I say. You know, the creativity is the fun stuff. I, you know, I use it to hopefully inspire and get a lot of you excited about why you should do it. But first, let's see you take action and open an account and contact Joe. I think you have a Calendly link or there's a link, I think, Thomas, to put up for folks to uh, reach out to you, Joe, set up an appointment. Also saying that, reminding you that um, I'm not sure. Are you driving or flying up to Boise? Boise, I'll I'll, I'll be flying to Boise. So I'll drive. Yeah, most people are going to be uh, getting into Boise uh, tomorrow night. So uh, Joe will be with us, uh, real estate tour and then table and uh, probably taking appointments during, but has a whole room full of people live that he'll be handling. So realistically, your appointments will start next Wednesday or Thursday with Joe and our core team. They're all going to be together as we're uh, going to have one extraordinary event. Joe, talk about the, you know, I actually loved it the unemployment happened because it's, you know, forcing people to become, you know, amazing entrepreneurs and talk a little bit about, I think some of the, you know, what I'm call the fear factor of what if you don't do it? I mean, there's some people who do their IRA completely wrong. And I know you mentioned it before, but given where we are politically, economically, the tax rate, when you do take it out for some of you, if you're younger, I mean, you don't know what it is. So talk a little bit about how you'd shift up that having more certainty about the tax you're going to pay. Because I think it's a that's the one thing I don't like about qualified plans for those who are thinking they're going to be taxed later. You don't know what the tax rate's going to be. Yeah, that's that's very true. And and that's where the Roth vehicle really kind of makes the tax conversation really a non-conversation. It doesn't really even have to occur. There's no taxes as long as you've you made your contributions and you adhere to the IRS rules. That's the beauty of the Roth IRA is that tax conversation doesn't even need to happen. It doesn't matter what tax bracket you fall into, which makes it such a great vehicle. Uh, but for some of those, especially on the solo or the 401k or the 403b side, a lot of the monies that you've been contributing into these employer plans for the last few years are usually going to be tax deferred or traditional and what we call a traditional IRA type plan, which means no taxes have been paid on those funds yet. So taking a distribution on those funds could be a huge hit, now, not just because of the existing tax bracket that you're in, but that 10% early distribution penalty is also going to come into play as well. So, I mean, even using that money as a distribution, you can be looking at 30 to 50% tax bracket. Before you even have any of that money in your pocket, you've already kissed half of it goodbye without even touching it. Uh, and that's a horrible rate of return versus if you were to keep it in the IRA, put it to something useful that could be generating a plus 10% for you. Uh, so completely different mind shift. And that's where you want to make sure that you keep your retirement money in a retirement account and, and don't use it for, for quick fixes. 
Uh, it is definitely a long-term play, and that's what it's designed and geared to do, is to make sure that you have some money when it comes to retirement, not for the here and now, not for the short-term physical stuff and upgrades to houses that you like to do. It's not designed for that. Uh, it, it really is designed for you to use to make sure that uh, you don't go out to the pasture to die. Right, Laurel? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be none of that. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, is there anything else on the link? Thomas, I haven't really been watching the chat. Anything on the chat that we need to be handling? Questions that uh, people have to uh, talk to Joe? Yep. We went ahead. We put the link out there uh, to go ahead and connect and schedule time with Joe. Uh, you can click that Calendly link in there. Um, Frenchie Benjamin did have a question. What is equivalent to a Roth 401k for the entrepreneur self-employed solo 401k? Other than that, just a lot of people saying they want to talk to Joe and how to connect with them. So it'd be that link. And then we have that one question. Yeah, Mary wants to know, um, 76 years old, can she or should she still open a Roth or an IRA? So at 76, uh, is there still earned income there? That'd be the, the next question is, uh, are we generating any earned income? So again, some of these are more personal. You may have to go uh, one-on-one. So yeah, let's start. Let's start with the solo K question. I know Thomas, you mentioned the solo K. We haven't yep. had a chance to to go on that one regarding self direction. So as far as the self employed, the equivalent to you there, even being self employed, remember it's not one or the other. So even if you're self employed, yep. that only means you get to have an additional option, not one or the other. It's just in addition to at that point. So with the solo K. That is a great self-employed plan. It's more so geared for the small business owner. You and maybe a spouse would be the only other participant to that plan who's maybe hired on as the accountant or to kind of help take care with filing and things that may occur with a small business. It really is geared more for the, the mom and pops type shop operations where it really is just you and potentially a spouse that's assisting you. Um, that's where the solo K account uh, has its this is where the solo K is, is really a great option for those of you who are self-employed is it functions just like a 401k for a major employer would. It has that tax deferred option. It has that, that traditional bucket, if you will. Uh, but the solo K account also allows for the Roth bucket as well. So it's the only hybrid of sorts where when you're owning your own business, you can make contributions into the tax deferred, the traditional side, or the tax-free, the Roth side of a solo K. It has both buckets. And the good thing about it is as your company starts to grow, uh, you may eventually exceed what they call is the, is, is the MAGI limits, which is adjusted gross income limits that may prohibit or keep you from the ability of being able to make a contribution into the Roth. But that's where you know the creative team that you guys have exposure to can definitely ad adjust a few things if you are in that that LLC or entity or corporate lifestyle, as you will, versus the W-9 lifestyle that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. This is where you have the ability to have a solo K that allows you to make the contributions to both the traditional and the Roth. So that uh, for the self-employed individuals, that's definitely a great vehicle for you to utilize because it has both. The other great thing about the solo K is the loan option. So you don't have to get too far into you know, business funding, but yeah. maybe you are growing your own business and maybe the next, next step to take your business to the next level is additional capital for maybe a marketing or drip campaigns or ad banner ads and things of the like, just to get some additional exposure. The Solo K has the ability to take out a loan. So it is the only plan in the qualified space that allows for you to take out that loan. So for some of you who are thinking, okay, I'd like to make contributions into a retirement account, and I'm also growing my own business, uh, the Solo K can be a great vehicle for you. Uh, it does allow for, like I mentioned, the traditional and the Roth, but it has that loan option. It's the only account that allows for that. So a great way for you to get access to $50,000 or half of the account's value, whichever comes first, that's what the Solo K plan really has to offer from a a self-employed perspective. So any of you that are S Corp, C Corp, LLC, if you've, if you've talked with Scott and he's setting you up with an entity, this is this is the retirement plan that can bolt onto that potentially uh, and allow you to start making some contributions and deferrals uh, into this retirement structure for your business. And I mentioned in addition to, 
So this isn't one or the other. You can still open up an IRA on top of the solo K. Remember, the solo K is for the entity. The IRA is for the individual. So you can have a solo K and a Roth IRA at the same time. There's no limitations on how many types of accounts. In fact, Laurel, you're, you're a great testament to this. She, she's got a Roth and she's got a solo K. So she, she's doing it all. Um, that's, that's and my kids. <laughs> and, and your kids, absolutely. And again, so the, even then, let's touch on that. So yep. even children, you know, if, if you are a self-employed individual, you know, maybe you are creating that marketing material and you want to use your kids as models or uh, maybe they're assisting you with invoices that you're sending out by postal mail. Why pay your children allowances when you can uh, make contributions into their Roth IRA uh, to, you know, again, get them somewhere where I personally I was never at. I, I never had a Roth IRA waiting for me when I turned 18. So I had to start my own. So I mean, what great way to get your kids, kind of give them a jump start. If you have the ability, you own your own business. Roth IRAs are a great vehicle, a great vehicle for kids as well. You just got to find a way to put them on the books and pay them. But as long as you figure that out, whether it's through modeling for collateral or through, you know, hired help just to take care of invoices, whatever it looks like, put them on the books. Make them models. Make there them you models. Exactly. You can make them their models since the moment they uh, are born. Okay. And because um, then you get in that W-2 and every year it's 6,000, 6,000. If you follow Kyle's my, model, if you do nothing but add 6,000, which is $500 a month, to the kids, figure out through our community is pretty easy to do, figure out how to get them, you know, 10, 12, 15 percent. I mean, they'll be it's it's pretty much a built in plan. Every one of those kids also have flip accounts. So, again, that's a great way to store the cash instead of savings accounts and money market accounts that don't do what flip can do. So, again, these have all worked together. I think prior some of you are still getting your brain wrapped around it. I have new clients and I and I old clients and you're still not using it all right. So you each you have your solo your your individual accounts with Joe. They have flip accounts with iFlip, and that's in the market. And then you're going to meet Chris, who can also through your Roth or any of these, you can also buy into digital currency. And that's what I love about what Joe and the uh, the team have done, uh, Greg and the owners, is they have allowed the hemp. Uh, real estate, the cannabis project that's going on right now in Hawthorne, any of you accredited uh, can invest in that through your Roth and do digital currency. So three new asset classes to me, uh, and you probably know the truth about it, Joe, but I think you're the only trust company, even, you know, there's, there's other good ones, but they don't allow the level of alternative assets. Some of them are really narrow. Those of you that are from other countries, it's really narrow. If you're in a socialized country, typically your qualified plans can only be against you know, something that's mortgage backed or your own personal real estate, and you can do some loans back and forth. Um, so what happens then? A lot of uh, folks from other countries um, have companies into the United States. Those companies can have the qualified plan. So there's a way to get to it. Again, you just got to get serious about wanting your life to be this way. Again, it's not a program, it's a lifestyle. And it's a serious one. A few questions, Joe. Well, Teresa, are you a fiduciary? You're a custodian. Um, why don't you explain the difference a little bit? There is a difference. Yeah, so so fiduciary so. is like a financial planner. So I would say, no, you're not. You're a custodian, not a fiduciary, but confirm that. Correct. So that, that's exactly, that, that you, it's pretty accurate. So yes, we are the custodian. So we custody any assets that you hold in a qualified account. Now, the good thing about being a custodian versus an administrator is I can do everything from a fiduciary responsibility as far as custodying assets. That's about as far as I go there. Um, but from a custody and reporting standpoint, I can do everything in-house. So a lot of times when you're dealing with qualified plans, let's go back to the solo K for a brief moment. That's where uh, with, the, with the solo K, you may have a lot of companies that will actually adopt into another company's plan. Uh, what that means is at the end of the day, you still have a third party that's taking care of the reporting, taking care of contributions, distributions when you hit retirement age. So processing times on those types of accounts can take significantly longer if you're dealing with a third party administrator versus an actual custodian who can hold everything in house. Uh, And that's really what we do. We kind of hold everything in house as a custodian, not a TPA. Uh, and and as, as far as the fiduciary responsibilities, we are custodying and reporting the assets. 
Uh, so to that regard, yes and no, but primarily, I like, guess, Laura, like you said, we, we are a custodian. And then just to piggyback on what you mentioned as far as the assets are concerned, that's another differentiator that Horizon Trust has really started to do over the yeah. course of the last two years is, and actually, Laurel, I don't think I've shared this with you as well, but uh, we are rolling out, we're digitizing all of our assets, all of our uh, support documents as well. So in about 60 days, a lot of the paper work that's usually required to move money from one custodian or to another will be gone. Uh, we are spending a lot of time automating our processes. That's the biggest time consumer when it comes to moving money from, say, a a Fidelity or a Charles Schwab or a Wells Fargo and moving them over to the self-directed IRA custodial world is actually the length of time that it takes to get the money here. Unfortunately, every custodian, we rely on their processing times and some of them can take right now two to three weeks before we even see funds. Uh, You may have already identified an asset a month ago and now you're behind. So uh, we were at least trying to speed that process up as much as possible to alleviate any headaches that could uh, unforeseen headaches anyway, uh, due to delayed processing times. But we've also put a lot of time and effort into our compliance team. Why? That is why we are one of the only custodians out there willing and able to accept some of these new and emerging asset classes that are that are well that you guys are even starting to be exposed to cryptocurrency, cannabis, definitely being two of those that are the newest, latest, and greatest CBD. All of these things that are coming out, uh, even though there's no federal regulation. Now, I'm not saying that I can hold every type of cannabis deal known to man. That part I can't do just yet. It's not federally approved, but can't there get are. Blessed. Yeah, that's right. But there are ways that we can do it. And that's where the, the structure just needs to be defined. And that's really it. And, and that's that's uh, that's exactly I think you're, you're pretty accurate on that statement. I think the last person who was even trying to do it with us was Kingdom and, and they're not doing a really good job. So I, I think I, I think I'm the only one that's fully functional and, and able to handle both of these two new asset classes just from a compliance standpoint. We uh, have the legal team to, to do it. Well, and I think part of it too is how we brought the deal to you. I mean, that deal we put together was the you know, what they're really investing is they're investing in the property and the the the, the real estate and the equipment. They're really not buying into any license, right? As an individual, right. a few of us own those licenses, and we're like your tenant. So I think the creativity of the whole team, the way the deal got done, was to allow you guys to really do a real estate transaction in the cannabis space. So. And Again, just a lot it. of people won't even look at it because they're not really out of the box. They don't think like, or, you know what you're going to see. And I think a lot of you, especially if you're out on Facebook and haven't really been in a more sophisticated financial situation, no is usually the answer. Or here's what you're going to hear over and over, and especially in traditional financial firms. We don't do that. That doesn't mean it can't get done. But they don't do it. So really listen to the words. It's we don't do that. Well, I get you don't do it, Schwab and Fidelity. And even like some of the large banks, that doesn't mean it can't be done. You're in the wrong shop. You're the wrong group of people. So Joe, appreciate all your expertise always. Again, Thomas, you're seeing anything that's like glaring out there that we need to talk to. I think a lot of you, your questions uh, need to be just yeah. to do some one-on-one. So um, yeah. again, the calendar link is up there. Joe's taking appointments and it's just really important to get this stuff set. It does have to get set by the end of the year or you will, I would say, blow 2020. As we head into the fall, you'll hear me start talking about like we talk about it light throughout lighter throughout the year, October, November, December, you're going to hear like, you're going to see Scott. Well, then Joe, we're going to hammer you to get 2020 fixed because a lot of you have heard it. You have your checklist. You're not doing your checklist. So you wonder why you're not getting a result. You get out of order and year after year, you miss the very things that you need to be doing. So some of them are not negotiable. I say a lot of what we talk about is not negotiable, but you seem to think it's like, you know, Okay, whenever you want. So, Joe, um, any other thing you want to say to the folks? Uh, That's it for now. I'm going to see you guys shortly here in Boise. So uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave it alone at that. I'll probably be up there. I'm going to try and get up there Sunday night. I'm um, trying to lock down my okay. phone as we speak. So Sunday night, worst case, early Monday morning. But I'll be there Sunday. You can't Sunday. miss the real estate tour, dude. Come on. I know. I, well, especially if we're going to be taking Chris out there. Come on now. You know, I got to be. Well, then get in Sunday morning. It's an easy um, yeah. Vegas to Boise. Get up there on Sunday morning so we can, you know, look around and go shopping and 
We're actually shopping on Saturday. Saturday, we're putting the entire infrastructure of the building together. For those of you who've wanted to go on a tour, if you're missing this one, October 11th and 12th is Kansas City, Missouri. And the actual tour will be in Topeka. We'll be taking a bus out. And then uh, the 12th and 13th. So we're going to consolidate four-day event into three very long days. Um, so put those on your calendar. And then after that, we'll be doing some tables online in December to complete the year and in uh, January to launch the year because we don't have time to wait for everybody to get together. We have too much we got to teach you and you've got to stay in order and you cannot leave 2020. Uh, with all the stimulus and all the different options, I think tax returns are going to look really different this year. So we look at all these different things most of you don't even think about. Like, anyway, it's cool. Joe, you can hang out if you uh, want, um, but let's switch gears a little bit. We're going to go back to our virtual meetup and marketplace. We do this once a month. Our next one is September 16, 17, and 18. And we are building that class now. Those of you who have been before, you cannot come again, but you can come uh, next week. So uh, Thomas and Steve do an amazing job. They lead what's called the Virtual Meetup and Marketplace Graduate Program. So they're actually leading the Graduate Marketplace, which is the 27th, which will go from 12 to 4. So uh, I'll be on a little bit to kind of refresh you on how to do an Ask, Tell, Ask, a Close. And now you will have April, May, June, July, and August. You'll have five graduate groups that can come together and have a marketplace. And if you think, well, I've already sold people, you're going to sell them deeper into your funnel. So it's a really, really great group of people who come together as graduates of the marketplace. And Thomas, I think we're going to open it up a little bit to other table folks. Again, if you haven't been to and Nassos for a couple of years or a while, it's best to go to the uh, kind of the original class uh, get reoriented to it. So, because once you get to the graduate level, we don't do a lot. We just jump in and you better know what you're doing if you want to make some money. So with that, Thomas, do you want to give, is that the link for next week? Yeah, the terse link is actually the direct purchase link for the graduate meetup uh, or the graduate marketplace. Um, but the second one is just the, our main store and you would be able to get tickets to the virtual meetup marketplace, the money marketplace, respective of where you're at within our conversation when it comes to money. So if you're, you haven't attended an event, uh, you're on Facebook, you're watching this for the first time, you want to learn more, you want to purchase access to the virtual meetup marketplace. Again, that's going to be September 16th through 18th. And then uh, the, the gradual marketplace for all the veterans out there, for the ones who have gone to that event, um, is going to be August 27th. Last month, uh, when we did this event, we started at 12 and we said we went to 4 p.m., but actually we went a couple hours longer. We had, we had a lot of people on, a lot of people connected, a lot of people having a good time and you know, depending on the room, we may do that again this time. So love to have everyone there. And like Laurel said, you know, if you just because you've had a conversation with someone doesn't mean that there's not some other way that you can help them. Uh, there will be plenty of new people in there since we just had 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 a new event and a lot of people out there doing new things too. So always a, always a good time to have a conversation, see what else people are working on and see what you can do to help one another. So both those links are there in the chat. And uh, Laura, we have a couple of faces here that people may not be familiar with uh, yeah. but i know we want to give them a, a little bit of a shout out here absolutely so uh in order megan one um she is unable to be with us today but uh we will uh be featuring her i think she made what over eight thousand eighty six hundred i think yeah eighty six hundred dollars and uh what's interesting about her and um rick from the last event is they made no very little if any money inside the marketplace of uh, the participants that we had, they took the ch the techniques that we taught them and they went to their database and just a few tweaks and they knew they had money right there. And that's how a lot of people are, is you just need some tweaks and some uh, distinctions on how to sell, especially how to sell online. Um, and who was number two? I think, Aaron, you were number two or is it Deborah yeah. was number two? Aaron was number two and Deborah was only 20 bucks behind her. So it's real close to the third spot there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, have fun. And uh, you and I have, uh, from the minute we met, had just an extraordinary, like, you know, launch conversation. And uh, uh, so and here you are, right? From uh, I'm going to record you on a New York video and us complaining about the economy and what we know that people should know, but they don't. Aaron, tell us what you sold, how much money you made. I sold $941 worth of my summit that you were on as a speaker and yeah. my coaching, my life coaching. Good for you. Yeah. And just wait till we ratchet that up. You're going to be at least 10, 15,000 a month. What's interesting to people like you, because you've come in it from a different angle, right? So when you come from a different angle into this world of summits, just monetizing is different. And now I think you're seeing like monetizing is everywhere. It's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Best experience. Best experience ever. 
Really? So tell a little bit about what you learned. Like what was, I mean, obviously you everything. Made, so everything yeah. financial. I mean, from Tom is helping with the marketing and the the pitch, you know, like everything from, from that point, Laurel and your whole group with everything from the tax structure, like Joe just talked about, to investments, to how to grow your business, like every single thing financial I learned in a six day event. And it opened up a whole new world, <laughs> literally a whole new world for me. And I'm so appreciative and I'm so grateful to be here with you again today. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's insane to in a great way. Well, and you have such a, a, a big group, right? And the way you came into it is just, you know, I'm going to interview a whole bunch of people. And then in my mind, I'm thinking dollar signs, dollar signs, Aaron. And I'm learning that. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought two of my clients to your meetup and marketplace. And they, because I knew that they would benefit big time because I love my clients and they loved it, as you know. Yeah. They loved it big yeah. time. Best awesome. move. Best move. $97. And I said to you during the summit, you can't even buy a stick of gum these days for $97, literally. And you got like this wealth, <laughs> no pun intended, wealth of knowledge from you guys that was just, I wish I knew about this when my kids started being born 22 years ago. You know what I mean? I was basically doing everything incorrectly, where now the mindset has just been blown open. So thanks to you guys. Absolutely. We've just begun. So stay right there. I'm going to include you and Deborah in a larger conversation. But Deborah, congratulations to you. Uh, So what did you sell and how much did you make? So I sold the um, name drawings. So I did everyone's name in a coloring style. I sold about 15 of those, two logos. I made a little over $800. And it really put me in in momentum. Like, wow, you really gave me the mindset of sell the ten dollar thing. Where before I was like, oh, I don't really want to. But yep. the bigger picture of them coming to the top of the funnel, then going down, streamlining my list. I purchased Peep, and I have inter uh, meeting with them today. So I'm taking my bundle of cards, which isn't behind me, in a lot, nice little box. <laughs> I'm taking everything on the on my phone on, on Mailchimp streamlining it and I'm going to learn really how to work a list and how to put people in. So yeah, it's awesome. So I think that's usually the thing that we do is we kind of blow people's mind about like what you have and how you can sell it and posture it. So for both of you, what was the kind of the one thing that had you just shift? I mean, I know there's a lot, but if there was one pivotal part that you could speak to, because we're going to use this video, we're going to speak to the new people, the people we want to come join in September and join in October. What would you say to them, right? Because you got to remember, a lot of people are skeptical, like, yeah, it's another summit. You know, in April, we were the first to the playing field. My gosh, it was amazing. Now it's like August, September, like the summits, the summits, the summit. And, uh, but we know we do it different. We teach you to make money. But what was the one thing if somebody's watching out there going, hmm, should I spend $97? What would you say? Erin, you want to go? Sure. I'd say absolutely do it now. And don't walk, run, because while you're there, what you taught me was sell now. Like I was going to wait till Monday when everybody didn't have their weekend and let them go through Saturday and Sunday. Sell now. And the two people that bought the coaching uh, from me, they were thanking me for not waiting till Monday because they needed it today. They needed it last week. So that was a massive pivot for me. I just thought, you know, courtesy, let them get through the weekend and then make calls on Monday. So sell now, serve now was huge. Yeah. Deborah, what about you? So really the pitch, like what did I have at my fingertips? What could I do? The bigger picture, the mindset, like you, I really have a lot of avenues. My whole thing was sell everything. No, 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 no. Focus back, sell that one thing and then get into that conversation because I said uh, two people ended up buying logo design. Yeah. And quite frankly, I, I shy away from those. Because you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So it's like, get clear, get concise. I have confidence in myself that I'm going to nail it the first time or the second time. I'm still working on the other one. But it was just a, a focus. And like you said, sell now, sell what you have. And the gold, like, you know, that book, Three Feet from Gold? We all have it. We just don't know where it is. And don't stop shipping. Yeah. So well, wouldn't you guys agree that there's the obvious is in front of you? You just haven't decided to monetize it. The obvious is right in front of you all the time. It's like, oh, I could sell that. But especially as women, right? You just give it away, give it away, give it away. 
when the obviouses are right there. Wouldn't you guys agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. What else would you tell those who are watching about right. the, sales, Absolutely. the sales experience? Right. So many people say, I, I can't do this. I can't sell. And not only can you not sell, you think um, you think you have to be eye to eye. So this is a different kind of eye to eye. But what would you tell them now, knowing that you both have made, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars, especially you, Erin, because I got to know you a little bit before the event. I can imagine, you know, when we first met, she's like, you're like, all the world does is sell things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and what would I, folks that are out there, I mean, they can do it. I think, you know, so what would you tell them more specifically about, you know, what they can do? Because they can make, anybody can make money out here. Absolutely. And I used to always shy away from Zoom or Skype or, because I love the phone. I can go into my own little zone with that person where I felt like the screen time, there was a barrier. And after speaking with you and doing more of the Zoom and that six day event really broke down a lot of mental barriers for me with regard to selling through the screen over the screen because it's really you still you're still meeting the heart you know on the other side so um i would say with regard to any kind of uh serving selling whatever it is that you need to do do it over the phone do it online um don't shy away from all of it i always say first the courage then the confidence you know always in life first the courage then the confidence so just have the courage to just get out there put yourself out there Make mistakes. We all do. That's where mo- most of the growth happens in life, no matter where you are. So just get out there and do it. Just again, so you build up that confidence. Deborah, what about you? I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I got to add one thing to you before you speak. Is uh, you're an artist, so I love that. I can't make money because I'm a starving artist. It's like, no, you're only starving because you choose to starve. You can be Absolutely. thriving artist. <laughs> yes, and I always have to think that. Always, have, but yeah. really. I had that thought, but yet I was working those little stupid part-time jobs and not taking my art and saying, hey, now I'm going to do it. And part of it is you got to focus and you got to get quiet. That's what art is. When I do my art, I'm quiet. I can hear. So just allow the patience. Put your stuff out there. Allow the patience to come and just stay the course. Don't get pulled off because as an artist, I get pulled left and right all over the place. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you? And I just have to pick and choose. I just, I didn't hesitate. I got invited by uh, Adam Hippness. He's in a, a smaller uh, power breakfast that I go to on Mondays. And as soon as he said it, I'm like, I met Laurel two years ago at, uh, at another event in Scottsdale. And it was phenomenal. And I never had heard of, you can make money at an event. I'm like, no way. <laughs> so that was the most exciting part is you got to actually try and pitch and, and practice and go back and forth. And the people were so kind. I'm like, okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it was really revolutionary. I would totally do this again. Absolutely. Highly recommend it. Awesome. I appreciate you two women. Thank you. And uh, Aaron, we're going to see you at the big table uh, coming along. Deborah, we'll see you soon. You just got, just think about it like this. You just got some fixing to do, right? It's right. Just, yep. So you just do some fixing and you go out and make more money. And this lifestyle that we're talking about. And uh, again, Joe, appreciate you being out there. I don't care where you are financially doing like I always say flip and Joe, like they're the space accounts that you just get open. So just like a lot of you think, well, I'm going to go to the bank and open checking and savings. You're going to go here and you open different accounts. So again, this is the alternatives to that. So yes, you're going to need a checking. You don't really need a savings. You have flip, you have your Roth, you have other places. And it's just this behavioral shift of now I'm going to put my money there. So some of you, this first few weeks of new behavior, it's just, it's, it is really different because you just go into one bank. Now you've got three places to go. It's not more difficult. It's just different. So I uh, just invite you all to keep walking into this lifestyle that we're all choosing. Uh, Aaron and Deborah will be in touch uh, with you guys uh, soon and shortly. Um, those of you that out here that are at the table, we are not live streaming Boise and we've got a lot of restrictions and issues. We will be though recording sections, what we think are extreme uh, content that you're going to need to come back to. So uh, all of you out at the big table that uh, can't join, watch next week. Um, Thomas and Steve don't know this now, but now they do. Is We'll be broadcasting to the table folks through their big table Facebook area because they have a private area. Content pieces that you know you need. So we'll be putting it out back through their Facebook channels. And I don't know, where else are we going to re-air it? Inside their academy, Thomas, we'll probably re-air it. Because there are some yeah. just really new, yeah. amazing content pieces um, that are coming that'll be video recorded and presented for the first time in Boise. 
All right. So you have a few links, you have a few things to do. Mainly you, uh, the two calls to action right now would be get uh, an appointment with Joe. I don't care how old you are, what your financial situation is. Get an appointment with Joe. By the way, last Tuesday, you needed to have gotten an appointment with Scott. So Thomas, if you want to put up Scott's email again, so we can, you've got it. They go hand in hand. A lot of your company's going to get that solo. So you got to actually meet with both the experts. That's why we put them together this week. And then the other thing you got to do is get signed up if you're a graduate for August 27th. We'll see you at the Graduate Marketplace. And if you've never been to a marketplace, because I see a bunch of new names out here today, which is awesome, we will see you uh, September 12th at the uh, Virtual Meetup Marketplace. So uh, all of you have an amazing day. Have a great Thursday. We'll talk to you on the other side. We'll be living this broadcast. Live. We'll be live. We actually, I don't know. <laughs> we'll be living, living. Eileen and I are going to be together in Boise, and she's our guest. So I guess somehow, Thomas, we will meet up with you on a Zoom uh, live from Boise on our broadcast on Tuesday next uh, week, yep. 12 noon. All right. Thanks, Thank you, you guys. So you have an amazing day. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week.